Hello, boys and girls. So today's read aloud is um, a book called Miss Rumpheus. The story and pictures are by Barbara Cooney. Um, it is a book that has been around for a long time and it's one of my favorites. And it also reminds me of springtime, which I am very ready for. Um, I'm ready for this cold weather to go away and I'm hopeful that the rain is going to bring some beautiful flowers, which is what this book is about. Miss Rumpius. We're going to learn about her favorite kind of flower too. The lupine lady lives in a small house overlooking the sea. In between the rocks around her house grow blue and purple and rose colored flowers. The lupine, lupine lady is little and old, but she has not always been that way. I know. She is my great aunt and she told me so. Once upon a time, she was a little girl named Alice who lived in a city by the sea. From the front stoop, she could see the wharfs and the bristling mass of tall ships. Many years ago, her grandfather had come to America on a large sailing ship. And so there's the wharf and there is Alice when she was a little girl. Now he worked in the shop at the bottom of the house, making figureheads for the prow of ships and carving Indians out of wood to put in the front of cigar stores. For Alice's grandfather was an artist. He painted pictures too of sailing ships and places across the sea. When he was very busy, Alice helped him put in the skies. So um, he carves, you can see on the front of the boat sometimes, or a ship, Sometimes they'll have a head or a figure that um, the owner chooses. And Indians, tall carved Indians, were often in the front of cigar stores. So, and you can see she's, she's helping her grandfather by painting the sky. That looks fun. In the evening, Alice sat on her grandfather's knee and listened to the stories of faraway places. When he had finished, Alice would say, when I grow up, I too will go to faraway places, and when I grow old, I too will live beside the sea. That is all very well, little Alice, said her grandfather, but there is a third thing you must do. What is that? asked Alice. You must do something to make the world more beautiful. I love that, said her grandfather. All right, said Alice, but she did not know what that could be. In the meantime, Alice got up and washed her face and ate porridge for breakfast. She went to school and came home and did her homework and pretty soon she was grown up. So that's her wise grandfather telling her she should make the world a more beautiful place. <clears throat> then my great aunt Alice, so this is Alice grown up. Then my great aunt Alice set out to do the three things that she had told her grandfather she would do. She left home and went to live in another city far from the sea and the salt air. There she worked at a library dusting books and keeping them from getting mixed up and helping people find the ones they wanted. Some of the books told her about faraway places. People called her Miss Rumpheus now. Sometimes she went to the conserv conservatory in the middle of the park where she stopped inside on a wintry day. The warm, moist air wrapped itself around her, and the sweet smell of jasmine filled her nose. This is almost like a tropical island, said Miss Rumpius, but not quite. I love to go to the conservatory. There's one in Columbus, and there's one in Chicago that I've been to. It was really beautiful. <clears throat> I tried this so that you can see the picture while I read. So Miss Rumpheus went to a real tropical island where people kept cockatoos and monkeys as pets. She walked on long beaches, picking up beautiful seashells. One day she met the Bapa Raja, king of the fishing village. You must be tired, he said, come into my house and rest. So Miss Rumpheus went in and met the Bapa Raja's wife. The Bapa Raja himself fetched a green coconut and cut a slice off the top so that Miss Rumpheus could drink the coconut water inside. Before she left, the Baba Raja gave her a beautiful mother of pearl shell on which he had painted a bird of paradise and the words, you will always remain in my heart. 
You will always remain in mine too, said Miss Rumpheus. My great aunt, Miss Alice Rumpheus, climbed tall mountains where the snow never melted. She went through jungles and across deserts. She saw lions playing and kangaroos jumping and everywhere she made friends she would never forget. Finally, she came to the land of the lotus eaters and there, getting off a camel, she hurt her back. What a foolish thing to do, said Miss Rumpheus. Well, I have certainly seen faraway places. Maybe it is time to find my place by the sea. And it was, and she did. From the porch of her new house, Miss Rumpheus watched the sun come up. She watched it cross the heavens and sparkle on the water, and she saw it in the glory of the evening. She started a little garden among the rocks that surrounded her house. She planted a few flower seeds in the stony ground. Miss Rumpheus was almost perfectly happy. But there's still one more thing I have to do, she said. I have to do something to make the world more beautiful. But what? The world already is pretty nice, she thought, looking out over the ocean. Look at her adorable little house. How can she make the world more beautiful? Hmm. The next spring, Miss Rumpheus was not very well. Her back was bothering her again, and she had to stay in bed most of the time. The flowers she had planted the summer before had come up and bloomed in spite of the stony ground. She could see them from her bedroom window, blue and purple and rose-colored lupines. Miss Rumpheus, said Miss Rumpheus with satisfaction, I've always loved lupines the best. I wish I could plant more seeds this summer so that I could have still more flowers next year. But she was not able to. After a hard winter, spring came. Miss Rumpheus was feeling much better. Now she could take walks again. One afternoon, she started to go up and over the hill where she had not been in a long time. I don't believe my eyes, she cried when she got to the top, for there on the other side of the hill was a large patch of blue and purple and rose-colored lupines. It was the wind, she said as she knelt in delight. It was the wind that brought the seeds from my garden here, and the birds must have helped. Then Miss Rumpheus had a wonderful idea. She hurried home and got out her seed catalogs. She sent off for the best seed house for five bushels. A bushel is like a huge basket of lupine seeds. All that summer, Miss Rumpheus her pockets full of seeds wandered over the fields and headlands, sowing lupines, and sowing means planting. She scattered seeds along the highways, down country lanes. She flung handfuls of them around the schoolhouse and, and back of the church. She tossed them into hollows and along stone walls. Her back didn't hurt her anymore at all. Now some people called her that crazy old lady. She's always walking and planting seeds. The next spring, there were lupines everywhere. Fields and hillsides were covered with blue and purple and rose-colored flowers. They bloomed along the highways and down the lanes. Bright patches lay around the schoolhouse and the back of the church. Down in the hollows and along the stone walls grew the beautiful flowers. Miss Rumpheus had done the third and most difficult thing. She had made the world more beautiful. My great aunt Alice, Miss Rumpheus, is very old now. Her hair is very white. Every year there are more and more lupines. Now they call her the lupine lady. Sometimes my friends stand with me outside her gate, curious to see the old, old lady who planted the fields of lupines. When she invites us in, they come slowly. They think she's the oldest woman in the world. Often she tells stories of faraway places. When I grow up, I tell her, I will go to faraway places and come home to live by the sea. That is all very well, little Alice, says my aunt. 
She's named Alice after her aunt. But there is a third thing that you must do. What is that, I ask? You must do something to make the more world more what? More beautiful. All right, I say. And here is little Alice with all of her friends sitting around Miss Rumpheus telling stories of faraway places. Doesn't that look fun? She doesn't even need a book. She's telling them stories. She has photographs of all of her adventures. But I do not know yet what that can be. So little Alice doesn't know yet what, how she'll make the world more beautiful, but she'll figure it out, won't she? Look how beautiful. I love the illustrations in this book. Sunset, the little poems. So, my thought for you today is, let's figure out a way to make the world more beautiful. But here's the challenge. It doesn't have to be the way it looks. It could be a beautiful feeling. It could be the way you make the world more beautiful by taking care of friends, helping family, supporting those you love. So make the world a more beautiful place. And I will try to as well.